to put that right Ooh. against a very large yeah, opponent. Yeah, Our ring announcer, as with last night, Kuka MC. He is one half of the Animal Cannibals, a well-known Hungarian rap duo. Dave Bradshaw here on commentary for night two. We are still getting our breath back from night one. What an incredible evening we had here in the Thor gym in Budapest just 24 hours ago. Plenty of incentive here, by the way, for Drake Destroyer. Anil Marek is the tag team partner of Robert Dreisker elsewhere, most notably in WXW, where they are the reigning world tag team champions. And so if Destroyer is looking for a measure of revenge after the underhanded way in which Dreisker advanced to the final, or maybe he can take out his frustrations on Anil Marek. I'm loading with the right hands is Drake Destroyer. Marek still very early on in his career. It's just over 30 professional bouts to his name. Oh my goodness. Big chop across the chest. I think Marek may be regretting taking on this singles match at the moment as Destroyer charges in. Marek moves out of the way. Destroyer's yeah. knee may be hurt, and Marek sees it, immediately focuses on that right knee. Not really endearing himself to this Budapest crowd, is it, Marek? Oh my, almost took the knee out of the socket of Drake Destroyer. I think Marek has had a. A lot of success for someone so early in his career. Maybe that self-belief presents itself as a little bit of cockiness sometimes. This is smart though from Marek. You can see Dreisker's influence here because Marek is really wrenching away at that right leg, twisting the ankle. Having seen the damage that he was able to do to the knee a moment or two ago, focusing relentlessly on that body part, goes for a cover, but Destroyer so powerful. Got such a size advantage that Marek's really going to have to do a lot more to keep him down for the three count. Oh. 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 
This is what Marek doesn't want. Destroyer on his feet, unloading with the chops. Marek again, though, takes him down by the leg. DDT. Cover by the youngster and a kick out on two. Uppercut right into the back of the leg. Was interesting from Marek, really thinking on his feet here. And importantly, he's got Drake Destroyer off his feet. Destroyer, though, has enough power left in those legs to shove Marek away. Marek is headed up to the top turnbuckle. Here comes Marek, is caught. Great strength from Drake Destroyer. Slams Marek into that turnbuckle, holds on to him. Trying to lift him up. The blood rushing to the head of Anil Marek who gets dropped. Marek dropped with that powerful suplex. And now Drake Destroyer lines him up. Oh my God, almost took his head off with the boot. Drake Destroyer with the cover and Destroyer gets the victory. So a measure of payback for, against an ally of Robert Dreitschka. Drake Destroyer with the win over Anil Marek. What a win to kick things off on night two of the Passion Cup. és urak úgy kell elkezdeni ezt a második estét itt a Fashion Pro Cup 2021-es bajnokságán, és nem bemutatkozásra kezdtem ezt az estét, hiszen aki már túl van az első adáson, az tudja pontosan, hogy én, Google MC vagyok a házigazdája ennek az estének, úgyhogy köszönöm szépen, hogy ismételten itt lehetek veletek, és nem csak én vagyok itt veletek, hanem azok a versenyzők is, akik nem jutottak be a selejtezőkből a döntőbe, de itt vannak természetesen a döntőseink, de hogy ki lesz a bajnok, ezt ma este fogjuk csak megtudni. Itt van már is a négy lény, úgyhogy szeretném az öröm vagy a nem öröm tetszéseteket, hogyha kifejeznétek a nevek hallatán. Tehát itt lesz majd a döntőben velünk Tihanyi Péter! Meglátjuk, hogy muzsikál. Itt lesz velünk Maverick! És Szeca Bolto! Ők minden tehát majd egyszerre lépnek ide be a ringbe, és is közöttük fog eldönni, hogy kiszerzi meg először itt a Passion cup -ot az első részben. Köszönjük szépen nagyon a Csetai Torcsimnek, hogy itt lehetünk. Ezen kívül köszönjük szépen az erőtér Powerliftingnek, valamint a Ring 27-nek, azaz a Ring 27-nek a támogatást, és a Magyar Pankráció Dojo-nak, hogy összehozták ezt a mai izgalmas promóciót. Remélem, ti is szeretitek ezt a mostani versenyt, és akkor bemutatnék még nektek egy pár résztvevőt, akik kell szeretni, akár csak hangban, akár testben, akár képben, akár lélekben. Jöjjenek már is a kommentátorjaink, mert őket általában nem szokták bemutatni, mi viszont most megteszünk. Az Etalon Rufus Godfrey! Arti Tyson! És András középen! És a figuráink, akiket nagyon szoktunk szeretni, mert hogy hiszen rajtuk múlik, hogy egyet, kettőt, vagy akár hármat csapnak a kezükkel, és ezzel véget vettek egy-egy küzdelemnek. Szóval az első bíró már is itt van Orbán Tamás személyében. De érkezik majd még ide Taszilo Jung. És az első meccset is már bíráskodta Rainer Inger, úgyhogy neki is egy nagy tapsot. És akkor útjára engedjük a második összecsapásunkat. Jöjjenek már is a résztvevők!
can see what it means to Goyash to be in front of a Hungarian crowd. Very happy to be here. Senza Volta was a big challenge for him last night. This will be an equally big one. Speaking of guys who had a good night last night, Dennis Cash Tunic picked up a victory in a three-way match to get his Passion Pro career off to a winning start. Uh, Kuka MC on the microphone with plenty to say about Dennis Cash Tunic, who's still wearing that bizarre hat. Someone needs to tell him that that went out of fashion several decades ago. Donik and Gulyash one on one. Shake of the hand from Gulyash to the referee. I doubt there would be any such chance of the same from Donik, although Donik is offering his hand to Gulyash. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. Donik not here to make friends. He's here to pick up victories, and so far. With one match down, he has been very successful at that. See on the back of his trunks there, it says, In Cash We Trust. Dornig all about picking up the paycheck. He's here to make money. And win championships, and maybe... If he can defeat Guyash here, making it two wins in a row from this opening weekend of Passion Pro, then perhaps Dornig is going to be in line for whatever championships are available to him down the road. Dunik clearly making a deliberate effort here to frustrate Gulyash, putting himself in the ropes to ensure that Gulyash has to wait to get a hold of him. They're gonna lock up again, I think. Yeah, once more though, Dunik is playing this a very strange game of cat and mouse. Yeah, Dunik might seem quirky, might seem unorthodox, but he's not an idiot. He knows that Gulyash is relatively inexperienced and liable to make mistakes if he gets annoyed, if he gets irritated. And that's why Dunik is more than happy to bide his time. He's as you see, rolled out of the ring here. One. Maybe he should have done his stretching back in the locker room, but... Gulyash doesn't seem like he's taking the bait. In fact, he seems to be having some fun here. Known as the bull of the village, a Hungarian country boy is Gulyash. Is a strong young corn fed country boy. Been eating his vegetables, obviously. A very well put together young man. Got a lot of power as Dornig is finding out. Dornig able to escape there and get a hold of that left arm of Gulyash. But hang on a second. Single leg drop kick. Dornig again. Biding some time. I don't know how many timeouts he thinks he can have. 
Technically, he's within his rights. Referee's going to issue a count. He has till 10 to get back in the ring. At some point, though, Dawley's going to have to stay in there and try and find a way to gain an upper hand. Well, that's one way to try and take Gouyash by surprise. That's another way to bite the arm of your opponent. It's not a legal way. I don't think Dawley cares. Gouyash backs Dunig into the corner. Uh, Dunig needs to release the arm, which he does. Uh, Dunig was never going to give the clean break. In fact, smash right to the back of the skull. Bending those rules as far as they will bend without them snapping in two. That is what Dunig's strategy seems to be here. He unleashes a, a torrent of kicks and strikes to Gouyash now choking him out in the corner. Again illegal, but he breaks it before the five count. Dornig though now with a knee to the midsection. Snapmare takedown on Gouyash. Kick right between the shoulder blades. And the cover. Dornig straight back on to Gouyash. Applying some pressure. He knows he needs to wear down Gouyash, who's got so much energy, particularly so much enthusiasm, adrenaline coming out of that performance that he put in against Senza Volto last night. Volto ultimately victorious and into the final of tonight's Passion Cup. That's our main event later on. It will be Senza Volto against Maverick, Peter Tihonyi and Robert Dreisker with the Passion Cup on the line. There's plenty on the line here too though and Gouyash knows that for him what's on the line is he's got to convert what has been an impressive performance into a victory. Hasn't really been able to match that performance from last night here so far as Dunik has frustrated him at every turn. So, elbow smash from Gouyash. That one did definitely do some damage I think to, to Dennis Cash Dunik. Here comes Gouyash. Gouyash I think was looking for that cannonball that he so often uses. In the end though, Dunik moved out of the way and Gouyash went face first into the turnbuckle and now takes a kick round the back of the head. Problems here for Gouyash. Dunig trying to again frustrate, get under the skin of Gouyash by showing him disrespect, that slap across the face. Look at this from Dunig. Absolutely no respect whatsoever. Short arm close eye, don't send Dunig down. Needs to get a bit more power behind them. Dunig ducks the third one. Another slap from Dunig on the clothesline finally. When it came was an absolutely brutal one from Gouyash. Gouyash Erkshi is part of a wrestling family. His brother and sister in the business as well. The Gouyash clan really making their mark on Hungarian wrestling as Gouyash drops Dunig on his back. And now the cannonball this time. The cannonball hits the target. Here comes a sent on splash. All of that body weight. 300 pounds down on Dunig. The cover and a kick out just about from Dunig. And Gouyash finally now starting to show 
some of that form we saw yesterday. Gouyash, front face up, maybe looking for the suplex. I think it was what he was looking for, but Dulnik went behind and... It's that strike to the side of the face. Got a strike off now in the middle of the ring. Slap from Dulnik and another one. Gouyash giving as good as he gets. In fact, maybe better than he gets because Dulnik I think was rocked by that slap across the face. Bicycle kick from Dulnik. And Dulnik's looking for the German suplex. That's a, a big ask against someone the size of Gouyash. With the momentum from the ropes, he got it. The cover from Dulnik and a kick out from Gouyash with, I think that what a tenth of a second left. Nonetheless though, Gouyash is still in this. Dulnik looking to end it. We saw him win that three-way yeah. match with a pile driver. Can he do the same here? No, he can't. Gouyash powered his way out. Turn that into a backdrop, and now Gouyash, God, the right hand might have knocked out one of Dulnik's teeth there. Gouyash, cross body out. The momentum carried him off, couldn't stay on for the pin attempt. Looks for the suplex. Dulnik escaped. Might have been even a brain buster he was looking for, but either way, Dul oh, Dulnik raking the eyes. Referee didn't see it. Dulnik, now for the pile driver. He took a shortcut to get there, but Dulnik hits the pile driver. Dulnik with the cover, and Dulnik has won two in a row at Passion Pro. Well, you can hear exactly what this crowd think of the means that Dennis Cash Dulnik employed to get the victory. Dulnik, though, more than happy to have his hand raised. He won't care how he got there. The fact is, he did get there. And Dulnik can leave this weekend in Budapest undefeated. <laughs> Gouyash showing what he thinks of Dulnik. I think by giving Dooley the finger, maybe Gouyash earned, his re earned the respect of Dennis Cash Dunig. A strange code of honour Dunig has. It allowed him to cheat to get the win. But afterwards, he shows respect. Dennis Cash Dulnik picking up the victory over Gouyash Erci. Over here. Guys, I just want to say thank you very much for being here. It was such a pleasure and I fucking love Hungary. <laughs>
that was won by Dennis Cash Dunig. He's going to be looking to be in the winner's column himself today. One thing you can't say about Norman Harris is that he lacks confidence. He has had some success already in his career around Europe. But I think the main criticism of Harris maybe is that he, he offers a, a fist bump to a fan who's not interested. The main criticism seems to be he's, he thinks he's bigger than he is. That time, it was a fan who got turned down. Harris is his, his own... Harris is his own biggest fan. Here comes Leon. Leon against Norman Harris then, and Leon is an Italian wrestler from Bologna. We saw him in action last night as well. To my knowledge, this is the first time that Harris and Leon have faced off. And it's certainly an opportunity for both of these two men to really make a statement just as everyone else has been trying to do in the opening nights here, the opening weekend of Passion Pro. <laughs> Bell rings. We are underway between Harris and Leon. Collar and elbow tie up. Pretty well matched it seems in terms of strength. Leon trying to force Harris into the corner. And eventually shoves him away. Leon showing off those muscles and Harris just got an experience of them close up. This time Harris ducks Leon goes behind into a rear waist lock as he's Fans here in the floor gym in Budapest look on. Wrist lock now from Leon. That was a stamp on the foot from Norman Harris. A shoulder block. Neither man goes down. Harris seemed to get the worst of it. Harris being asked by the referee if he wants to give up. No chance of that, I'm sure, at this stage in the match. Drop kick from Harris. And a nip up. Well, he needs to look at his opponent, Harris, busy celebrating. Leon hadn't gone down, and now it's Harris who gets shoulder blocked over the top rope and to the arena floor. Norman Harris, I'm sure that physically hurt, but even more so, it's embarrassing there that he he was so busy showing off, he didn't realize his opponent was still on his feet. And that is one of the parts of Harris's game that he needs to cut out. There's that tendency to be so busy celebrating himself that it can actually affect his chances of winning the match as a face first smash into the turnbuckle, courtesy of Leon. Harris trying to escape the suplex attempt and does. Able to get into the ring under his own steam. Lariat to the back of the head of Leon. Harris will go for the cover, gets a two count. Harris has found a way to get back into this. Knees right into the rib cage of Leon. Yeah, Leon, that's smart. He got his hand on the bottom rope. That's one way out of a pin that's 
requires less energy than kicking out. He might not have had the wind in his sails to kick out after it was knocked out of him from those knees to the ribs. Running back elbow in the corner from Norman Harris. Harris is headed up, it looks like. Harris, middle turnbuckle, took a long time finding his balance. Didn't look comfortable up there at all. We'll be even less comfortable now as Leon throws him over his head. Harris landed hard on his back in the middle of the ring. Attempt at the kick from Leon. That time Harris was too fast. With a big lariat, this time to the front. Harris looking to roll him up. And they all folded up and his legs over his head there, Leon. But still, the Italian was able to kick out. Harris still with some beef with that kid who wanted a, a fist bump from him earlier. Only Norman Harris, eh? Getting a feud with a 12-year-old. Drops the leg. The cover. Kick out on two. Harris. Right hand into the jaw. Harris sends Leon from one side of the ring to the other. Sending him literally from pillar to post at the moment is the international superstar. Now, nah. Harris with the right hand is spitting at Leon. Disrespect from Harris, the cross body. That seems to have fired Leon up. He caught him. Twisting Uranagi slam down. Harris suddenly finding he's on the receiving end of a barrage. Big clothesline. The cover from Leo to defeat Norman Harris. Harris kicked out. But it was not particularly persuasive, you'd have to say. Leon lining him up, looking to put the finishing touches to what he thinks is going to be a victory here. Try for the bicycle kick. Harris maybe trying for that German suplex from the rear waist lock position. Here he comes. Leon running into the boot of Harris. And a leaping uppercut off the second turnbuckle. Now it is Harris with the confidence. The victory is headed his way. Harris fired up. It's a boot load. The bicycle kick this time. Hitting Harris right in the face. Fireman's carry from Leon. Counter from Harris. The sunset flip. Gets his body weight on top and Norman Harris steals it. Harris the winner. Leon can't believe it. Harris got the job done from nowhere. It's an unpopular victory here in Thor's gym. Harris still having some arguments, but he is the winner. Fresh off their victory in six-person tag team action last night. Here are Dover and Icarus, the Arrows of Hungary. What an ovation for one of Hungary's finest exports, the Arrows, certainly one of the most respected teams in all of Europe, and we're going to hear from them now. Sziasztok, 
El akartunk csak mondani, hogy óriási öröm nekünk az, hogy végre ezt a projektet tető alá tudtuk hozni, és meg tudtuk mutatni nektek ezeket a sárcsokat. És az egész Passion Pro azért jött létre, hogy ti is, és a birkózók is nagyon jól érezzék magukat. Tehát csak nem nagyon röviden, mert nem, nem vagyunk benne a szavak emberei, úgy gondolom. De, de iszonyatosan jó látni, hogy ennyien eljöttetek ebben a szuper őrület kánikulába, még ha ingyenes is a dolog. Én is eljöttem volna. De az a lényeg, hogy ez hihetetlen jó érzés, hogy... hogy... Igen, Izu, neked is tetszik, bejön? Jó a műsor? Igen. Akkor jó! Szóval, hogy pont ez a lényeg, hogy pont ezért csináljuk, hogy olyan birtózást hozunk nektek, amit esetleg még nem láttatok, úgyhogy... Hát majd jövünk még a dátumokkal, augusztusban biztosan leszünk. Na, ez az! Csináljunk egy olyat, mert van egy-két ajándék cucc, egy cheap pop kedvéért. Csak nem erint veli szemedes, kitűzők. De, hogyha sikítsatok, meg hajítjuk. Ne, én sikítatok, ti meg akkor dobáljátok, hiszen én már tudom, hogy mindenhol nagyon jól sikítanak. De nézzük meg, hogy akkor tényleg, most hát, ha a ti az egyből el tudja dönteni, hogy hol sikítanak, a leghangosabban. 3, 2, 1, gyerünk, hat Oda is, na, ennyi volt a sikítás, ennyi? Teljesítmény. Illetve a hölgy is mondta, hogy képzeljétek el, hogy most jött először ilyen rendezvénye, és látod, már ajándékkal tér haza. Na, ezért érdemes eljönni ilyenre, így. Köszönjük szépen! Azért mondjatok még egy-két szót erről a Passion Pro-ról, hogy ez mit jelent, miért jött létre, és hogy mi várható még a folytatásban. Lesz-e folytatás? A leges, legalapvetőbb koncepció, amit az elén kitűztünk, az az, hogy bárki, aki Birkózik, dolgozik a műsoron, az teljes szenvedéllyel szeresse azt, amit csinálunk, innen kapta a Passion Pro nevét. És szeretném megragadni ezt az alkalmat, hogy megemlítsem a krút, hogy akármennyi nehézség is történt ma, nagyon köszönjük, hogy mindenki elintézett mindent, és minden működik. Igen, nyilván nem lehet semmilyen Eros Project anélkül, hogy valami ne romlana el, ne tűnne el, ne romlana el és tűnne el, vagy ne tűnne el és közben romlana el. Ez van, és nagyon szépen köszönjük, hogy ennek ellenére is itt vagytok, és nagyon remélem, hogy az összes arcot látom majd a következő gálán, és a következőn, és a következőn, és HCV-n, és Passion pro és mindenen, és nagyon szépen köszönjük, hogy vagytok. Mi is köszönjük, hogy vagytok, kívánunk, és Tomás, Tomás, és 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 Tomás, Turn after being in action on night one. Tonight he's going to be in singles action. I don't like you. Don't worry. I don't like you. You mean you don't want to be with us? Say it in the ring. We also want you, right? No, I don't know. We just want to be with you. Can you be with us? Can you be with us? Jó az 5 kg, mi tud a 
Budapesti agresszió a nitroglicerin robbanékonyságával. Always a very interesting crowd dichotomy with Tamás Szabó. He is very well respected by so many Hungarian fans. He's achieved an awful lot within the country's wrestling scene. Some people are critical of him for his occasional questionable tactics. I think the word I used to describe him yesterday was tricky. But he's certainly the favorite here against the Red Scorpion. Red Scorpion coming out here with something of an attitude. Cooper MC making it clear what he thinks of Red Scorpion on the microphone there as we get underway. And I heard Red Scorpion in that Italian accent of his telling the crowd before Sabo came out to the ring that I don't like you were the words I heard. seem surprised or even annoyed that the fans aren't cheering for him. What do you expect? For the vitriol between Red Scorpion and the fans here in the full gym seems to be entirely mutual. But it was Red Scorpion who started it. Sabo, a very experienced competitor, perfectly willing to stand by and let that play out before they finally get underway here. And a collar and elbow tie-up to begin did not produce any result. Again, they look up. Sabo this time has a side head or head or takedown on Red Scorpion. Scorpion, you see, moving his body around. That was smart. Shifting his position so that he was able to reach the bottom rope, forcing the break and then rolling out of the ring to recompose himself. This time it's Scorpion who has the side headlock. Transitions into a hammerlock and then back to the headlock. Sabo shaking his head, saying it's going to take more than that to restrain him. Another one of those headlock takedowns. Trying to force the shoulders onto the canvas for a pin. And it's Sabo's shoulders who eventually go down. Somewhere in the middle of that, Red Scorpion had a handful of hair. The referee is warning him about it. Side headlock from Sabo, who gets sent to the ropes. I think Scorpion was surprised that Sabo was standing there. And again, it's Scorpion who's had to briefly retire to the outside. Sabo this time not prepared to give him that respite. I think that's the right decision from Sabo, because whenever they're in the ring, as he misses an elbow there, Red Scorpion, it seems to be Sabo who has the upper hand. From Tamash Sabo's perspective, don't give him the break. Don't let him have time to recuperate. Into the corner goes Scorpion as a kick right to the abdomen. Snap suplex from Sabo. Sabo pressing his body weight down on the shoulders, gets a two count. Sabo complaining that the referee's count wasn't fast enough. I, I didn't see anything wrong with the cadence there, but... Scorpion lured him in. Maybe Sabo was getting a little bit complacent because Scorpion had been complaining so much. He just took it as par for the course, and now Scorpion trying to show a bit of aggression. Now he's finally got Sabo down for really the, the first time in the match for any significant period of time. and. It, Seems that Scorpion's going to go for a chop in the corner. Another one. Impact, the noise of that impact echoing around the four gym. 
Drop kick to the back of the head. Scorpion goes for the cover. Kick out on two from Sambo. No doubt though, that drop kick did its damage. Slaps from Red Scorpion. Now Sabo rolling here, he's lost his tempo and Scorpion happy for the match to become this. He wants it to be a kind of a slugfest as Red Scorpion. Sabo sent to the outside. Red Scorpion is taking his time, allowing himself to get a breather. Of course, in the process, he's giving the same luxury to Tamash Sabo. Sabo rolled back in the ring after a count of five. Scorpion trying to send him straight back out. This time he's going to follow him out there. Shot into the kidney from Tamash Sabo, who's battling back on the outside of the ring. Red Scorpion getting a little bit of consolation from a fan in the front row. Not sure how sincere that was. Pretty sure almost everyone here is in favour of Tamash Sabo. There's a poke to the eye here from Red Scorpion. Scorpion has Sabo. Laid prone, middle of the ring. Taking time to pose, was that a mistake? Maybe not, he still had time to drop the knee. Hooks the right leg of Tamash Sabo. The left shoulder came up. Scorpion, to his credit, straight back on. You can see him trying to ensure that Sabo can't get in too much oxygen in there, get the blood flowing. The more lethargic that Tamash Sabo is, of course, it goes about saying, the better it is for Red Scorpion, who hits a drop kick right in the face. Cocky attempted a pin. Uh, Scorpion guilty there of believing his own hype a little bit too much. He had a little bit of success. If he'd gone for a, a proper pin, a technically sound one, he might have had a bit more luck. Scoop slam from Red Scorpion. Now to the ropes. Building up a head of steam. Somersault sent on splash and a cover. Yeah, Sabo kicks out. That was that was casual, lazy almost. The cover from Red Scorpion. Didn't hook the leg. No body on body weight on the shoulders. Sabo backs Red Scorpion into that corner. Fans here feeling every blow. They try to support Sabo. I think there's a clash of heads there. A meeting of the minds between Red Scorpion and Tamash Sabo. Sabo was part of that three-way match with Norman Harris and Dennis Cash Dunig last night. Red Scorpion here, six-person tag match, clothesline here from Sabo. Russian leg sweep. Such was the authority of that that Scorpion almost bounced back up to his feet. That's how hard the impact was. Bulldog. Sabo over the top, hooks the leg. That was a proper pin, but a proper kick out as well. Red Scorpion being taken to school here at the moment by Tamash Sabo. Sabo senses it, Sabo knows he's in control. Looking for the double underhook face buster perhaps. Escape from Red Scorpion with the backdrop. Scorpion means business now. The strap comes down. Red Scorpion. To the, rope. the second time of asking, 
That move that worked earlier did not work this time. Inside Cradle from Tamash Sambo kick out by Red Scorpion. A pin attempt again, but it's countered by Scorpion. That was smart from Red Scorpion. Got a two count out of it. Into the corner. Cross body. A roll, roll through. He rolled through. Kick out by Red Scorpion. Scorpion thought he had the cover after the cross body. Great use of momentum by Sabo to turn the tables. Scorpion now, though, into a Falcon Arrow, essentially. Hooking him up for the cover and kick out from Sabo. Now, another pin attempt. Another kick out. That was more disbelief than anything on the part of Red Scorpion. The first pin didn't work. So he tried it a second time. Red Scorpion. Now, maybe trying for that same move again. But in fact, it's Sabo who's going to go back to the well. Again, trying the double underhook again, the counter. Both men at this point in the match trying to find an opening to hit one of the big moves they have in their inventory, in their, within their capacity as you see Sabo and Red Scorpion have reached the part of the match where it's simply who has enough left, who can hit the hardest. It's the boot. Red Scorpion duck of the clothesline from Sabo, ducks in again, goes to the rope. Sabo, leaping forearm. Will that be enough? Yes, it will! The face buster! The cover from Tama Sabo! And Sabo puts away Red Scorpion! Hard earned victory here for Tama Sabo! Sabo not happy with the referee for some reason, but he should be happy with himself because he had to work hard there against a highly motivated Red Scorpion. Tamash Sabo picking up a win here on night two of the Passion Cup. I hate you. Oh, this place. It's horrible, like you and the other bastard right there. Oh. Oh. Wow. Charming. Maybe some of them might be coming. Let's go, Dion. An impromptu opportunity has just arisen for a young man from the jungle to make his Passion Pro debut. <laughs> Mao Kai, a classic example of the Passion Pro ethos. Anyone who has the passion to succeed will be given an opportunity in this promotion. Look at the intensity, the determination on this young man's face. As I understand it, he was only told that he was going to be given the opportunity to compete here just a few minutes ago. He looks to take full advantage. Maokai hasn't fired up here in Thor's gym.
What a match eight for Blockhead of night one of the Passion Cup. Took on Hungary's own Peter Tihonyi in the last match of the evening, the final match of the first round in the Passion Cup. Tihonyi was the one who eventually proceeded to the final. But Egg LeBlanc did not do himself any harm whatsoever. There will be people from wrestling promotions all around the world who will have watched last night and seen exactly what this young Frenchman has to offer. Finds himself in there against another Hungarian youngster in Maokai. Bell rings, here we go. Maokai is fired up to be in a Passion Pro ring. Fans loving what they're seeing from this youngster. Egle Blanc going to take him down with the waist lock take down. Malco escaped. So much raw energy from Malkai. Great to see. Egle Blanc, the royal hunter. He's been hunting success here in Passion Pro. Yesterday, of course, just narrowly unsuccessful in his efforts to make the final of the Passion Cup. By the way, that final is coming up immediately after this match. Tihonyi, who beat Egg LeBlanc yesterday, will be in there against Robert Dreisker and Maverick and Senza Volto. Here comes a tilt and whirl head scissors takedown from Maokai. Okay, the drop kick, Egg LeBlanc dispatched to the outside. Maokai taking a run up as he waited too long. No, he hasn't. He landed it. Landed it. Absolutely nailed Egg LeBlanc. Launching between the ropes head first goes Maokai. Oh, Egg LeBlanc catches him though, drops him on his back in the corner of the ring. Yeah. That might slow Maokai down. Yeah. Standing sent on by Egg LeBlanc. Goes for a cover, kick out on two. That does seem to have, uh, I guess, neutralized some of that early energy from Maokai. That suplex onto the side of the ring apron. Really a, a wake-up call, I guess, for Maokai as to just how difficult it's going to be to succeed in a Passion Pro ring. Once again, though, hard to emphasize this strongly enough. This young man, Maokai, didn't even know he was going to be here just a couple of minutes or a few minutes ago. Kick out. Also, you can't, really can't say enough good things about Egg LeBlanc as well. If you have not seen that match between Egg LeBlanc and Tihonyi from night one of the Passion Cup, go out of your way to see it. Great match as Maokai goes for a roll up, gets a one count. Leaping clothesline from Maokai, another one. Locked in some trouble. Can you imagine having not even known he was going to be competing here if he walked out of night two of the Passion Cup, Maokai with a win. Up to the top rope. Maokai, cross body, picture perfect from the youngster. Goes for the cover, hooks the leg, and Egg LeBlanc kicking out on two and a half. But Maokai needs to not get frustrated, he needs to be pleased. But that opportunity was one he was able to create for himself. And on his feet there is a dragon suplex from Egg LeBlanc. Now what? Egg LeBlanc headed to the top rope himself. Maokai's already been up there. Maokai lying prone in a bad position. Rolled out of the way though. The 450. Schoolboy roll up from Maokai. Kick out on two. Egg LeBlanc stays in it. 
Hurricane Rhino just about took him down. He took both legs as well as Maokai, who almost got it. Oh, the spinning kick right to the side of the head from Egla Blanc. Blanc now pump handle driver. What a move from Egla Blanc on the back of the head of Maokai. It's academic. Egla Blanc the winner. What a victory for the Royal Hunter. Aigle Blanc picks up the win. He has had a very satisfactory weekend despite his failure to get to that final. You've got to say, when Aigle Blanc looks back at this weekend, he will be pleased overall with the two performances he has put in, but what about Maokai? Maokai, on his debut, a young trainee given an opportunity and grasped it with both hands. A huge future, you've got to believe, for that young man. Introducing to you, the next superstar of Hungary. Yeah, Egle Block may well be right. Falkai, a remarkable debut, but it is Egle Block who wins the match. So here we go, it is the moment we have been waiting for all weekend. We are getting ready here for the fatal four-way final of the Passion Cup. You're looking at Maverick, who defeated Marius Alani after Alani suffered a broken finger yesterday, was not able to continue in their first round match. Maverick finds himself one win away from claiming the trophy. Hungary's own Peter Tihonyi picked up a Remarkable win against Aigle Blanc to get here. What a fans here in Fours Gym would absolutely love to see Tihonyi, the future of Hungarian wrestling, walk out of the Hungarian capital, Budapest, here tonight with the Passion Cup in his possession. Not a huge amount of love for this man, given how he made it to the final. Robert Dreisker with a low blow against Drake Destroyer last night in their super heavyweight first round clash. Dreisker, by hook or by crook, like it or not, has made it to the final and he will be, by some distance, the biggest man in this contest. And the final piece of the puzzle, the French sensation. Got here by beating Gouyash Erkshi. A really stunning first round match last night. Sends the Volto, Paris is own. Looking to return to France with the Passion Cup. All four men are in the ring. Let's take it one more time to our ring announcer, Cooker MC, for the official introductions. Végül nem utolsó 
sorban szintén 85 kg-ban egyenesen Párizsból a szenzációs francia The French Sensation Senza Volta! És a vezető bírónk ebben a mérkőzésben Tassilo Jung! A csatámos napszat neki is! Hát a jöjjön szórakozás mindenkinek! Jöjjön a Fashion Cup! Ready? Akkor oké. Jöjjön a döntőtel! All right, ring introductions are done. I do not envy referee Tassilo Young. He's a very experienced referee, but he has got four people here to contend with. How you maintain control in this situation, I don't know. All four men legal at the same time. We keep going until there is just one forward. Pin for submission. Any one competitor over anyone else. First person to score a fall will be the winner as Dreisk is not happy that Maverick landed on his feet after being deposited outside of the ring. Dreisk looks for a clothesline. Maverick takes the big man down to one knee. Sihoni and Volto is an interesting matchup between these two. Volto off the second rope. Hurricane Rana cartwheel though as a counter drop kick from Tihonyi, and it's Tihonyi who got the better of Senza Volto there. Another drop kick, this one to Maverick. And Dreiska finally asserting his dominance. Very difficult task for all three of the other men in this match. How on earth do you take down, how do you tame Robert Dreiska? As I said, by far the largest man in the match, by far the strongest. If you're someone like Senza Volto, you're going to have to rely on your, your speed, your agility. What he's doing here, how do you bring Cutter on Robert Dreiska? Maverick off the apron to Tihonyi. Here comes Senza Volto. Volto thought about it. He faked that he was going to go out there. And he gets sent out there against his will by Maverick. Maverick might be about to go out there of his own volition. And he is leaping over the top. Takes out all three of his opponents, and Maverick may have just gained a decisive upper hand in the final of the Passion Cup. Maverick gets Volto back in the ring. That is sensible, very intelligent to only take one opponent back in there, but not paying off because Volto with a flurry of kicks to the head of Maverick. Maverick running up with a knee. Meanwhile, on the outside, Tihonyi and Dreiska mixing it up. Tihonyi up on that balcony. I'm not sure Dreiska wants Tihonyi up there. Did some damage to Egla Block from there yesterday. Speaking of damage, Tihonyi may have been irreparably damaged by Dreiska there. There's a backcracker from Maverick on Volto. A tornado DDT. And it's once again Maverick who seems to be in control, but here comes Dreiska with the elbow. Dreiska gets backcracked as well. Well, I think that did more damage to Maverick's knees than to Dreiska. That is the size, that is the durability of this super heavyweight. Dreiska seemed to enter Budapest yesterday in a bad mood. That mood hasn't improved, despite him scoring that questionable victory over Drake Destroyer. Taking his time now, slowing things down to a pace that suits him is Dreiska. The veteran is Robert Dreiska. He knows what he's doing in there. Plenty of experience, far more than even Senza Volto, who's by no means a rookie anymore. These two know each other very well. They have collided several times in promotions across Europe. 
Volto having to battle for his life in there against Dreisker. Big knee immediately stops Volto in his tracks. A big back body drop from Dreisker. Tihoni trying to get back in the ring and Dreisker not going to allow it. Once more the experience of Dreisker paying dividends for him here. He knows in a fatal four-way situation you want to have two of your three opponents on the outside of the ring so if you pin the third one inside neither of them can break it up. The key for Dreisker now is to finish off Senza Volto as rapidly as he can before either Tihoni or Maverick has enough strength to get in the ring and put a spanner in the works. Right, a big splash, and I mean big. Goodness me, Volto flattened like a pancake there. Dihonyi, once again on the apron, once again gets cut off at the pass. Dreisker, I think, has had enough of trying to keep Tihoni outside. Maybe he's going to switch strategy here, and rather than try and take out Volto, he's going to do, do some work on Tihoni. And goodness me, what work? Throwing him around the ring like a rag doll. Now Dreisker choking away at Tihoni. Mavericks back in as well. All four men. Back within the confines of the squared circle. Another big throw from Dreisker. This one on Maverick. And this was the danger, I think, for all three of Dreisker's opponents. And if he could find a way to take all of them down at once, then Dreisker can dictate things. Now, if you're Maverick or Tihonyi, Volto getting repeatedly knocked down here by Dreisker, I don't know how you begin to get back into this. How do you find a foothold against Dreisker when he's in this kind of dominant form? What's he doing here? Dreisker stacking all three opponents on top of each other. What's he thinking? What is Robert Dreisker thinking? He might be thinking he's about to win the Passion Cup. on all three told the crowd that they didn't deserve to see anything more acrobatic than that but it didn't need to be any more acrobatic than that it was highly effective from Robert Dreisker who can now take his pick who does he want to cover I think Tihoni and Maverick send the Volta they're going to have to form a, a temporary alliance here if they're going to have any chance have taken out Dreisker, but it, that's what they think they tried to do. It still didn't work. Maverick lands on his feet off the suplex attempt, and now all three together, and they do combine. Triple super kicks finally take Dreisker down. Well, did Dreisker miss his opportunity? While he had all three opponents exactly where he wanted them, maybe that was his chance to win this. It's the knee into the face of Tihonyi from Volto. Tihonyi trying to, trying to get a sleeper hold on Volto, who was able to arm drag out of that. Oh, Tihonyi caught him. Now he does have a sleeper. Got the, the legs wrapped around the body as well. Dreisker tries for a sent on, misses. Here comes Maverick, Maverick, with the springboard splash off the middle rope. But Maverick will try and steal the cover himself on Volto, who kicks out. That is the closest that any of these four men have coming to winning the match and claiming the Passion Cup. Hell of a performance out here from Maverick tonight. Volto got kicked. On the side of the head, Tihoni collides with Dreisker in the corner. Maverick now, Feynman's carry on Volto. The Mishinoku driver. The cover from Maverick to win it. Oh my. 
I don't know if Tihonyi knew about that. Dreisker shoving Tihonyi onto that pinfall and broke it up. Talk about smart from Dreisker. Using Tihonyi as a projectile. Oh my God, what a counter. Counter from Maverick and now Volto is going to try and steal the cover on Dreisker. Kick out on two. Volto there with his best opportunity to win this. It is finally poised between Volto, Dreisker, Maverick and Tihonyi. And Senza Volto leaps over the top. Dreisker taken out. And what is Tihonyi thinking? And what is Peter Tihonyi thinking? Nothing good if you're Dreisker or Volto. Tihonyi from the top. Tihonyi. Dreisker taken down. Volto taken down. Tihonyi trying to get Volto back in there. Oh, the Spanish fly. The Spanish fly from nowhere. From Senza Volto. And Volto's won it. Volto's won it. Senza Volto wins the Passion Cup. What an effort from the French sensation! And what a main event! The victory in the end, coming from nowhere! for Senza Volto. And in a career that has already had so many highlights, this will be among the top ones, because forevermore, Senza Volto can say that he won the first ever Passion Cup. Our official here going to hand the trophy to Senza Volto. What a two nights of action here in Budapest. And it's topped off with a Passion Cup win for the ages for Senza Volto. The atmosphere in here is electric in fourth June. Én most úgy gondolom, hogy ha egy hatalmasabb tapsolunk így együtt, akkor vissza tudjuk csalogatni a résztvevőket ide a ringbe, és együtt mindegyik őket meg tudjuk nézni, és egy hatalmas szép csoportképet is tudunk reálni. Úgyhogy hölgyek és urak, egy hatalmas ugrivalgás még egyszer, és ünnepeljük a bajnokokat, mert hogy így mindenki szinte bajnokat érezheti magát. Jöjjön a finálé! Our ring announcer, Kuka MC, inviting members of the Passion Pro roster to come back out here and acknowledge the remarkable atmosphere that this live audience has created 
over the past two nights. Tihonyi ever the sportsman holding the ropes open for Senza Volto, who just defeated him in the Passion Cup final. Goyak Erkshi in there as well, what a weekend he's had. And Maokai making his debut unexpectedly and finding a way to take Aigle Blanc to the limit. Great showing as well from Maverick in the final here tonight. All of these young men to be commended. They have had a stunning two nights. A weekend that everyone who witnessed it will not forget anytime soon. The first ever Passion Cup is in the books. Senza Volto has won it. Once again, the sincere appreciation for all of the fans here in attendance. It is celebration time for the winner of the Passion Cup, Senza Volto, the French sensation, making history in this, the first chapter of this brand new project for pro wrestling in Hungary. Thank you for joining us. We are the future.